Welcome back everyone. I'm excited to show you how to access structures through assembly language. So that's really important, um, especially if in the future you decide to reverse engineer some C programs that are compiled. This will be very valuable to you. So we're going to create a new file. We're going to call it structure.c. Okay. This will be our structure example. So we're going to start by creating the actual C code. So we're going to in include stio.h. We're going to have a struct of animal. And every animal has a name. Okay. Every animal has legs. Well, most animals, not every animal. <laughs> uh, and every animal has an age, of course. So let's just import a reference to our assembly function that we will make. So we'll call it ASM print animal. Okay. And it'll take a pointer to an animal. I'll show you how to do it without pointers later on. So here we're going to say in it main, we're going to have struct animal A. We're going to initialize it like this. So dog, and a dog has four legs. And let's just say it's an old dog. Let's say it's 18, very old dog. Okay, so it's, it's a dog. It has four legs and it's 18 years old. And, you know, that's how you initialize things in C when they when you're working with structures, you know, just a heads up. Uh, so we're going to say ASM print animal ampersand A to surpass the address of the animal structure variable into the ASM function. We're going to return zero. That's our C code done. You can check the description for the source code if you need it. Um, so here we're going to create a new file called structure.asm. Okay. Now here comes the magic. So we're going to say global asm print animal so that it's made public that label. We're going to say extreme printf because we're going to call printf. We're going to have our read only data section. So we're going to say format name db name percent s new line, null terminator. So, so we'll use this format name with printf when we're printing out the name, okay? We're going to do the same for the legs. And again, new line, null terminator. We're going to do the same for the age, guys, okay? Okay, so that's the read-only data section. Next, we're going to have the text section. We're going to say ASM print animal. So we're going to back up the RBX register because we're going to use it to store the actual uh, pointer. Okay. So uh, as you know, RDI equals address of animal. Okay. It holds the address of the animal. So we're going to put it in the RBX register because we're going to be re reusing RDI when we're going to call printf. Okay. That's why we've backed up RBX with a push because we're just overriding it. We'll restore RBX later. So let's just say pop RBX now and return. And obviously we're not doing anything yet. We're going to do some other stuff in here. So this will restore the old RBX value and return. And here we'll just back up, back up the RBX value. Okay. There you are. So just a bit more clear for you all. Uh, so RDI is the address of the animal structure. Okay. So we're going to say that we want to print the name. So we're going to say load effective address, RDI, relative, format name. This will be the first arg format for printf. Okay. We're going to load the second argument, RBX plus zero. And this will be second arg, which will essentially be the animal name. Okay, the address of the animal name. And how is this working? Well, if you look here, name percent %s. Now, what does percent %s require? It requires a pointer to a string to print. Okay. Um, in our structure, what is the first argument? Its name, which is an array of 20 bytes. Therefore, if we pass the first byte of the animal, which is index 0, we will get the name. Okay, which is why we do RBX plus zero. So here, RBX equals the address of the animal because we moved it from RDI to RBX register. 
RBX plus zero, that doesn't increment the pointer. So therefore it's, it begins at the very first byte of the animal. And the very first byte of the animal is the first byte of the name, okay? And since we're calling printf with a percent %s, it'll print that entire name until it finds a null terminator. So the name of the animal does need a, a null terminator at the end, guys, for this to function correctly. Super. So next we're going to say x or eax, eax. And this is because we don't have vector arguments, okay? For floating point operations. No floating point vector args. Cool. And then we're going to call printf. So there, that'll print out the name. Okay, so that's the easiest one. So let's print the total legs now, okay? Now this is offset 20 bytes. Now why is it offset 20? Let's take a look. The name is 20 bytes long. So therefore, logically, the next byte will be the start of the total legs. Now the total legs is four bytes long, okay? Remember, indexes start from zero. So index zero to 19 is the name. Index 20 will be the total legs, okay? So that's why we say offset 20. All right, so let's try that one. So we're going to say load effective address RDI relative FMT legs first arg format. And remember the relative here will use relative addressing, okay? And the load effective address here will effectively calculate what the absolute address is in memory of this relative address to the FMT legs, okay? I've explained why we use relative addressing in previous lectures, guys, okay? Uh, it's it's really important to use relative addressing if you can, otherwise you have to configure the the, the linker in a certain way. Okay, so it's better to do it properly like this. So next we're going to say move ESI, D word, RBX plus 20. And this will be the second arg, which is essentially a cast in an integer, animal total legs. Now how is this working? As you know, RSI would be the full 64-bit register. We only care about four bytes because it's because total legs is an integer. So we use ESI, which is the lower four bytes, okay? So we pull in a D word, which again is four bytes, and then we store an ESI. So we read from RBX plus 20. Now remember, RBX is the address of animal. So if we add 20 bytes from the address of animal, where do we point? We point to line five here, total legs, okay? Because the name is 20 bytes long and indexes start from zero. So therefore, if we read four bytes, which we do, because we're reading a D word from the 20th offset, we're essentially reading this four byte integer into memory, the total legs. Okay. So then again, we're going to XOR EX EAX because we don't have floating point arguments. And then we're going to call printf. So there we are. That'll print the total legs, guys. Okay. Now let's finally do the age. Now, what is the age? Well, we know the name's 20 bytes in size. We know the legs are four bytes in size. So what's 20 plus four, that's 24. So the index of age starts from 24 in offset. Why? Because indexes start from zero, remember that. All right, so let's try it. So we're gonna print the age now. So we're gonna say load effective address RDI, relative FMT age. So again, first arg format, uh, we're gonna move into the ESI register, D word, RBX plus 24. And then we're gonna say second arg, and it's basically gonna be like a cache to an integer, A, H. And then we're gonna XOR EAX, EAX, and we're gonna call printer. So yeah, that's how it works, guys. It's an extremely simple program. Um, so yeah, let's test it now and see if it works. Okay, guys, we're now ready to actually compile and test the program. So let's start with NASM. So we're going to say NASM F ALF64 because it's a 64-bit object file we want. It's 64-bit assembly. We're going to say structure.asm-o, structure.o. So there we are. That compiled our assembly program into a object file. Now we're going to compile the C program and link at the same time. So we're going to say gcc-no-pi. Because uh, calling printf, it does use the absolute address and addressing in our particular case, okay? So we're going to say structure.c, and then we're going to say structure.o, 
dash o dot forward slash structure. And there we are, that's compiled. Now if we run our structure, we can see name dog legs for age 18. So we can see we've successfully accessed the structure from assembly language. So congratulations, you're really starting to understand now how uh, actual C programs are so closely related with assembly once they're compiled. So now I want to show you the example of doing this without a pointer. So as if we pass the animal in directly. Okay, guys, so I actually took the initiative here to show you exactly what happens with godbolt.org, okay? So you can see here in the ASM print animal, this is how it would, should be accessed in assembly. So instead of using the RDI register now, it's because it's passed by value, we need to do RBP plus 16. So we're basically doing a similar type of thing as we did in the 32-bit assembly, okay? As you're supposed to do with 32-bit assembly, we use the stack instead of the registers, okay? So that's the only difference. We do RBP plus 16, which will uh, jump past this push RBP, which is 8 bytes. And then um, it'll also jump over the address of the return address, okay? And then whatever was on the stack next, which appears to be this, this is the main function. It appears to be this, as we subtract the stack pointer by 32 bytes. Uh, all this data here, that's what we're pointing to at that point. Okay, so that that's how this is working. So we're gonna just we're gonna just type this in now and see. All right, so let's head to structure.asm. Okay, guys, so back in the assembly then, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say push RBP to back up the base pointer. And at the bottom here, we need to do pop RBP. Okay, just like that. And once we've backed that up, we can say move RBP, RSP, just like that. So we have our, our stack frame here. And then guys, just under the push of RBX, we can say load effective address, RDI, RBP plus 16. And now this should point to the same place on the stack as I just showed you in that example code. And then RDI will be the address of animal again. So let's give that a try. We're going to go to structure.c. We're going to change this to a value-based system now. Just like that. And then we're going to try and compile it. Assemble, then compile. Now we're going to run it. And there we are. We still see that it works. So that's how it works basically, guys. You know, we're able to just do RBP plus 16. Why plus 16, you might ask? Well, here we back up the RBP, okay, before the push of RBX. So at this point, plus 8 will jump over the push of RBP, and another plus 8 will push, uh, will jump over the return address. So that'll leave us pointing exactly where the structure was pushed on the stack, okay? And that's how we're able to access the structures. I've now shown you how to do it with pointers, and I've shown you how to do it by value. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this lesson.